welcome everybody and thank you for dancing along with me, uh, Kathy, to our little Book Karma theme song. But um, I'm Nancy Bauman and I'm really glad you're here. I am Nancy Bauman, the book professor and the owner of Book Karma. I'm really, really pleased that you have joined us today. And this is our weekly webcast where we introduce authors to new ideas, new concepts, and professionals who can help you be successful in the whole, um, you know, life cycle of writing, you know, publishing, marketing your book. So I'm, I'm really glad you joined us. So um, I just want to tell you a couple things about what I do for authors. So I'm extremely passionate about helping authors to be successful. And as a book coach, I help just everyday people um, find the courage to tell their truth. And then I give them the tools that they need to write a what I call a high-impact nonfiction book that will either save lives, change lives, or transform society. And so, you know what? There we a lot of we have got a lot of problems in our world. I really believe that the answers are trapped inside of people. And what I do is help pull that out of you, and then connect you with the audience who actually needs you know your message. And so, um, I, I enjoy that, doing that. And I work with a lot of really busy professionals and. What they want to do is they want to establish themselves as an expert in their field and to, you know, enhance their credibility and attract a following. And so we write a powerful book together that can actually be expanded and repurposed so that they can deliver that content in multiple venues, such as keynotes and workshops and seminars and um, online courses and podcasts, etc. Because it's not about the book, it's about the change that you can create in the reader. And so you want to meet them in whatever way that they're, you know, already comfortable engaging. So that that's multiple different purposes. Um, and then um, I'm also the developer and owner of Book Karma, which is an international book marketing platform where we connect authors with new audiences around the globe through a shared social media structure with other authors. And it only costs $1.99 a month, so if you're an author and you want to get your book out, it's great exposure for yourself you know, and your book internationally. Now, at the top of our chat list, you'll see I put the web addresses for both uh, the book professor, the book coaching arm of my business, and for Book Karma, so you can check that out at your convenience. So, um, like I said, I am extremely passionate about helping authors to be successful, and so I want to do everything I can to help you get succeed. Um, not just with the work I do, but I, I'm fairly connected in the publishing industry and have the opportunity to rub shoulders and make friends with other professionals in the industry who you probably don't even know about. So I like to expose my followers and others, you know, to all of the tools that you can have at hand. And so that's why we have these weekly webcasts. So I'd love for you to join every week. If you can't make it, at that specific time, everything is always recorded in video, and then we turn it into a podcast as well for uh, later viewing and, and listening. So, um, you know, you know, like I said before, you know, you have to meet your audience where they like to engage, and I don't think everybody can always be available at 10 a.m. Central Time on Wednesdays. So, we want to make everything available to you across time zones, across the world, etc. So, really glad you're here today. Um, and just a little housekeeping item, if at any time you have questions during this um, whole presentation, really would love for you to type your questions into the chat box and we'll answer those during the course of our time together. So anyway, um, before I tell you about this month's crazy, wacky guest, <laughs> someone who you, will bring energy and life and vibrance to this time together, I know you'll love her. But I want to tell you about this month's contest for Book Karma authors. So every month, our premier partners offer a special prize package for the current authors on Book Karma who refer the most new authors to Book Karma. Because we're all about, you know, the karma thing, give out, give out, give out. And we, the more authors we have on Book Karma, the more opportunities everybody's book has to go out to new audiences, new, um, you know, new readers around the world. So we have a contest every month for the most referrals that we get. This month's is fabulous. Our, my partner, Book Baby, who is one of the premier ebook publishing publishers in the world and in the industry, has given us 
one a, a complete ebook publishing package for one of our authors. So what that means is you can take your book and they will uh, convert it to an ebook. They will help you with the marketing and the sales on it as well. So it's a $299 value. So um, I'm going to just, just um, over in your chat box, I put the link to um, the page where you can, you know, sign up for that contest. So glad to have you here. But in case that's not why you came today, I probably ought to introduce you to today's guest. Um, well, I don't know quite what to say about Kathy. I've never met anybody like her before, and that's a good thing. Well, Kathy and I met a few weeks ago in Charleston, South Carolina, at um, the PubSense Author Conference, and I was just really drawn to her. We had dinner together one night. She's larger than life, and she has the largest interactive, active, I don't know, book club in the world. I'm going to have to let her explain it to you, but one of the most incredible ways to get the book your book out the word about about your book is through book clubs and so that's what Kathy's all about so Kathy I'm just gonna turn it over to you if you could tell us what you do and tell us about the pulpwood queens and just the story behind it have at it okay I started out by opening the only hair salon bookstore in the country did you say shortly... hair salon bookstore okay myself through college doing hair and it seemed like every time I'd lose a job I would go back to doing that so it was my sister's idea um, that I opened this hair salon bookstore because I'm always giving books away I might as well be selling them mm -hmm. so shortly after I did that this was in 2000 January the new millennium um, I started a book club and it was called the Pulp with Queens and it was a book club where we were going to empower ourselves because we're beauty within queens because we're readers. I mean, quite frankly, we all just inherit our own parents' genes. So we come out looking the way God wants us to look. We don't always have what society deems, you know, a beauty look. So I thought it was very empowering to crown ourselves queens. And it started with six complete strangers and now has grown to nearly 700 book clubs nationwide and in 15 foreign countries so we are growing so fast I can't hardly keep up and I just really wanted to share my love of books just like mm -hmm. you love to help authors I do too and so I think that's why we hit it off yeah. so um, I'm on a mission to help first time first book authors get discovered and to also help authors who maybe have a body of work that maybe is regional and the rest mm -hmm. of the country doesn't know about it. Oh, yeah. I really want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay, and I love that. I mean, and, and the thing that is, um, that I loved, and I'm going to just put a back plug to this PubSense author conference where we met. What I love about this is that we go to um, different conferences that surround the publishing industry, and there are so many people out here who want to help you. Our desire and our kind of life mission is to help people like you be successful because we believe in books, we believe in your message, we believe in the importance of reading, and, um, you know, it's a, um, I don't know, I just love books. Of course, I've loved them since I was a little girl, but what Kathy does is really unique. It's different, and this whole, um, I just want you to sit on a minute, Kathy, about the the reach of your online book club and tell us how it works. What do, you know, do they all have all these books that they're on a list that they can read, or, or how does it actually work? Well, I actually, I select all the books. I'm a total mm -hmm. dictator queen. Good, I you're the, the queen, yeah. I've this for a really long time, and I have a knack for picking books. I think about half of the books that I pick every year go to film, so I, I'm kind of on a roll. I know a lot of people watch the books that I pick. But when you've read as much as I do, I know a winner when I see one. Okay. So I'm constantly looking for um, that connection. What just had to switch a switch real quick. Yeah. But um, what is um, I think most important about what I do is that um, nobody else is really doing this in the country. Right. Um, I pick the books. Um, each group. I started out with about six women who grew to 150 really fast. And so they broke off to start their own chapters. And this was shortly after 
we started getting some major features on Oprah's Oxygen Network and Good Morning America. I had women saying, Okay, hold I on, hold on one minute. You said the magic word, Oprah. So we're going to have to hear a little bit about that. So I know, you know, it, that, you know, you've been featured in a lot of big places, Kathy. So obviously it's having an impact. And of course, every author I ever hear is like their big goals. I want to be on Oprah. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe we should talk to Kathy. <laughs> yeah. So, so you branched out and it's online. Is that right, Kathy? Oh, we actually oh. meet in person. Okay. And then I for the author to either teleconference in, Skype in, or visit in person. So I feel like it's one thing to read a book by yourself. And yeah. then it takes you to another dimension when you discuss it with somebody else. Yeah. But when you bring the author into it, the mm. full picture comes into focus. And you can truly understand the message that was trying to get across in the book. It connects us. The stories are what connect us. Yeah. And we're the only animal on this planet that shares our stories. Yeah. So and oh, it's yeah. important because right now in this age of uh, technological advance, uh, so many of us are not being able to share the stories. That's why reading is so important because it connects us with other people. Yeah, and that's exactly why I do the work that I do, you know, as the book professor. and and help people tell their stories because, and I strictly work with nonfiction. So, you know, that's because that's my slice of expertise and what I have a master's degree in. Um, but we have so many problems in our world. And I totally believe that the answers are trapped inside of people. And that when they are able to release that and connect with the people who are dying in some cases, waiting for those answers and those solutions, we can change the world one reader at a time. And I know you think that's true, too. You can also change the world through fiction. You know, storytelling is really, really powerful. It's the only way that we can connect on all these emotional levels to get engaged. And I love what you said about people, the high-tech thing. I mean, we're doing a high-tech thing right now, and I love it. But, you know... If I only sat in my house and Skyped all the time or whatever, I'd be a hollow, empty person. And so that coming together, that joining together as a community of, you know, human beings who are learning and growing together. I love that. So tell us more. Well, it's really about balance. I mean, you've got to have a balance between the two. Uh, after the Pub Sense Summit, I realized I need to get myself a little bit more tech savvy. Yeah. I learned so much, and I'm telling all my Pulp Queen authors, you have to go to this festival. Oh, it's it obvious. It, it's wonderful. Any author who really wants to know the latest in what is happening in the book publishing world, yeah. I was absolutely amazed. I met wonderful people like you. Book Karma. Karma is my... In fact, I wear fragrance called Karma. I really believe in that. It's, it's not each of us doing our own agenda. It's us all working together. If yeah. we link arms... With everybody working together, whether it's you know the Oprah Winfrey program or reading program or the Good Morning America reading program or whatever, if we would all work together and get the world reading, I think that is the answer. I'm wearing the crown to world peace. There you go. I said it. Well, I'm answering a question right here. Somebody asked what conference we're talking about, and um, it, it's a conference that was. It's called the Pub Sense Author Conference, and it was in, in gorgeous. I think gorgeous, Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> it rained all the time, and I stayed inside, so next time I need to go early and do a little touring. But um, we had a, um, a wonderful conference, and Bren, um, who's on here, Bren McLean was, is one of the partners in that, and so we really appreciate it. They brought together the rock stars of our industry, and I mean, seriously, the rock stars. And I could just, Joanna Penn from England, um, uh, Robin's, Cutler from Spark, Mark uh, Lefebvre from Kobo, and um, oh, the Publishers Weekly guy whose name totally slips my mind right now, but Bren, you can type that in, and I actually know him. I've actually known him for a long time, and I'm over 50, so I can't remember. So anyway, um, anyway, so it was great. So anyway, t so, um, okay, Kathy, let's get back to the book club thing, okay? 
every author would love to be discovered by book clubs. So tell us how you work. How you say you like to launch new authors, etc. So when you say that out loud, I imagine that you end up with stacks and stacks and stacks of books that in order to pick one, you have to read. I even gave you one. So um, how does it work? All you have to do is send me your book. Don't call me because I work full-time as a hairdresser. As soon as I get done here, I'm going to work to do hair. But uh, send me your book. You can go to my website, beautyinthebook.com. It has my address, and you can email me. Everything's there. But just send me your book. I look at every book that comes through, and when I, I look for the story that has not been told. And I love first-time first-book authors mm -hmm. because nobody's really helping promote those authors. Yeah. I don't care who publishes it, right. but it has to be well-written, and it has to be a story that's going to enlighten and educate and, mm -hmm. and have some redemption qualities. Um, I, I like books that make us think. Mm -hmm. I pick some that are a little bit at the top of the, you know, the ceiling. They, they, they get a little bit outside the comfort zone, like the, drag, uh, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh. But it was such a wonderfully written book and mm -hmm. a, an incredible story. But we also do things like The Place Called Hope, which is a story about a Quaker pastor. Mm -hmm. We do all kinds of genres. And we did our first science uh, fiction fantasy book. Wow. Um, uh, we do everything, yeah. and it's uh, we our book club. I tell people it's not your mama's book club because we want to read books that are entertaining. Yeah. I don't need homework at 58 years old. <laughs> I've That's gone right. to seven colleges, and I I continue my education. But when I get together with my friends, I want to read a book that's going to make me want to talk with my friends. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing about our book club is that when I met with the Pulpit Queens of Gilmer, Texas, last night, and this is a brand new chapter. Each table was decorated with a, the theme of one of the book characters. It was amazing. Oh, amazing. how fun. Which is a nonfiction book by Karen Abbott. She's a New York author about uh, women who disguise themselves as Civil War soldiers. There is a Civil War uh, story I had never been told before. And hmm. that fascinated me that almost 500 women during the Civil War dressed as men for various reasons mm. to fight this incredible battle that was fought on our land. And, you know, I don't think I truly understood why in the South people can't let the Civil War go yeah. until I read this book, because I realized that it's the, you know, it was a battle fought right here where we live. Mm -hmm. It's hard to forget something that happens. It's easy to forget Vietnam and even some of the Afghanistan things, because it's out of the country, but when it's right here. So that's how we learn. We learn by sharing the stories and discussing the books. Well, it's interesting that you say that about the Civil War. Why can't people forget? Because I actually was at, at my own book club last night, and that topic came up. People were talking about how when they moved to the South, they would see... Um, like bumper stickers that said Yankee go home and they're like well wasn't that like 150 years ago you know and stuff so it you know things that are burned into our collective memories you know they don't go away and like you said it was on the soil so yeah. you said something that I I caught on to that I'd like you to elaborate on Kathy um you said that you pick stories that haven't been told before what what does that mean what do you mean by that for example, um, um, uh, let me think of one. The Glass Castle. I mean, here is a very famous newscaster who is, you know, uh, Jeanette Walls, who is known, you know, for doing the dish and all these celebrities. And what, you know, after reading her book, we find out is that her mother is homeless. They basically lived, um, you know, just off, just going from place to place. At one time, we're even living on the desert. Mm -hmm. And here's a woman who's very successful in Manhattan and is viewed this particular way. And yet when you find out her background from Kentucky clear out to, you know, out to the west uh, part of the United States, that she was literally uh, living hand to mouth when she was a child because she had a probably, you know, her mother had some sort of mental illness. <laughs> so, yes. It's a story I'd never heard before how somebody so famous could have such an incredible you know, upbringing and, and survived it and then had this wonderful redemption quality mm -hmm. of 
breaking out and telling the world what happened to her so others, mm -hmm. and I think when people read it, they go, well, then if she can succeed, then maybe I can. Right, and that, that, that's a perfect example of a non-fiction book blurb. Honestly, truth is stranger than fiction, and the stories that are behind people's lives are just fascinating, and I love that book, too. So um, so you pick The Glass Castle. So tell, can you tell us about maybe some new authors that, you know, you found their book and, and you, you guys did your book club about it that later went on to be successful, Kathy? Oh, we've had so many. Um, one of my favorites was, um, you know, we did Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that just went on. Julie Roberts started the film. Uh, most recently, Ron Rash has been a Pulp of Queen show of choice. He's a poet turned author. Mm -hmm. He teaches at studies in Kentucky. And his movie, he's got two movies coming out. Serena just came out starring uh, Bradley Cooper and uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And... That was a book club selection like five years ago. Uh, Serena about two timber, a timber bearing baron marrying another woman whose dad was a timber baron, and they were ruthless people. And I just had never read a book where I hated the characters so much. But then went by, you kind of understood why they had, were so ruthless. Yeah, um, it was an incredible, beautifully written story. And so, uh, you know, we've had same kind of different as me. Oh, I Rock love that Rock. book. Oh, I read that book, mm. um, and I called him, and I said, why isn't this a New York Times bestseller? And, and he'd end up selling over 200,000 copies, yeah. but never made the New York Times bestsellers mm. list. And I go, why? He goes, I sell them at conferences. And I, so I made it a book club selection, and like a couple weeks later, he debuted on the New York Times. And then he got a film deal uh, so that's in the making. So I'm hoping that will go to film. But uh, same kind of different as me is a life-changing book. It is, Kathy. And, and I just want to jump in here, though. My book club read that. And then about six months later, he died. You know, the, the person that, you know, was I can't remember his name, which is awful. But I, that is a life-changing book. That is a life-changing book. So... You're picking some good ones, so where can we see the list of things that you pick? Because I think I need to go back and, and get those on my own list. Well, they're in my book all the way up to publication day, mm -hmm. uh, 2008. The Pope of Queens, Tierra Wearing Book Sharing Guide to Life. You can buy it on online booksellers, but it's, it's mostly used copies because I have a new um, edition coming out uh, with my movie. So, oh, oh, uh, oh, okay, uh, book and movie. Let's talk about that. Uh, this, you know, I've been, all my life, I've always told people that books save me. I grew up in a family, wonderful, you know, family, but my parents didn't get along, and they fought a lot, and my sisters and I got caught up in the battle, and it was, uh, it was very ex upsetting to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I would escape into books. I would hide in the treehouse and read, and my teachers just kept handing me all these wonderful books. So... It was very important to me that, you know, where a lot of people fill a void in their life with drugs and alcohol, I'm telling you, pick up a book. It will solve all your problems. Keep reading and reading. And the day I read Pat Conroy's books, I said, I found my tribe. And I realized that, you know, a lot of people can't understand his books, but unless you grow up in that kind of situation, yeah. um, you know, you don't. But for me, it was like I'm not alone. And so I've been on a mission ever since, whether just handing copies to my clients in the store, you've got to read this book, it's incredible, mm -hmm. to now I sell all the Pope of Queen books in my salon. And mm -hmm. um, it's just really important to me that this happens. So I've had a lot of wonderful um, things that have got me a lot of public attention, but we're not really a household name. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got all these book clubs. It's still not really known. So I thought the book would get my the Pope of Queen branding out there, mm -hmm. but it it actually was a fluke. I had a producer call me that was asking me about one of my books, and we started this conversation that lasted over a year. And it ended up that she pitched my book in um, Los Angeles to many uh, studios, and they all wanted it, but the one that wanted it the most was DreamWorks. So I got the call from, they had a screenwriter that was wrong, Claire, Sarah, Laura, 
Lauren Taylor is the executive producer. And Claire called me and she said, did you hear the news? And I said, no. She goes, Lauren didn't tell you. And I said, no. And she goes, well, we shocked it. Everybody loved it, Kathy. And she told me all the studios. I was like, you're kidding me. And she said, but DreamWorks wanted the most. And they said, no matter what anybody else bids, we want it. And I buckled to my knees because, <laughs> you know, DreamWorks. I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, of course. That's like winning the lottery if you're an author. And But what I'm really excited about is that the fact that the movie is going to talk about my book club and helping authors. It's going yes. to have authors in it. Yes. It's going to be talking about our authors. It's going to be talking about our book club. Yes. It's going to be, I think, kind of a combination of a modern day steel magnolias oh, about the relationships and the community that happens when you get together with your girlfriends and you read. And my girls in my book club lift me up so high. I yeah. mean, I just cannot even thank them enough for all the things that they've done to help this reading program and um, we're just really excited about it but the one thing I tell everybody this is not about me it's about all of us joining together whether it's Nancy Bowman and Brooke Karma or the book professor or you know joining the folks at Pub Since Summit uh, coming to my girlfriend weekend which is my annual book club, club convention mm -hmm. it's about us we can change the world if we'll just yeah. read well, I want to ask you a question because I, I totally agree with that and I love the connection we make. But we do have a question um, from Chris Collins that she says, how does a book make you want to talk to your friends? And I'm sure you have ideas about that, Kathy. Are you kidding? I read a, a line in a book and I, I just read the, it's here on my bookshelf, it's the story life of A.J. Pickery. Oh, we're reading that next month in my book club, yeah. But it's about a bookseller and a book a, a book publisher's rep who, it's a love story. But there's so many quotes in this book mm. that were just so incredible. It's the first time in my life I've actually taken a highlighter and highlighted, highlighted, highlighted. And I just couldn't wait to share with my friends some of the remarks in the, that, that were made in this book by Gabrielle Zavon. It mm. is absolutely one of those books that you just can't wait to talk to somebody about yeah so it doesn't even matter if they're my book club i was telling everybody about that yeah <laughs> well i have another question for you because you know obviously you have the largest ongoing book club which would be awesome for people to be able to be you know featured in it but how do you have any other suggestions i mean there's so many book clubs everywhere and and i know that you know, they're not really joined together in any way. You know, it's just groups of friends and neighbors and all who get together and all. So um, do you know of any other um, maybe uh, tactic that people could use to be part, you know, be read by book clubs, Kathy? Well, I think the best thing that an author can do is you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. And you're going to have to go out the door and go to every writer's conference in the area, you're going to have to, you know, Pub Sense Summit is a given. I mean, yes. I, that will be a surprise to anybody. It's the first one I've seen that is actually totally devoted to authors. Yes. And uh, it's in Charleston. I mean, why wouldn't you want to go? Save your money, go. But, um, I, you know, I know at Girlfriend Weekend, I have lots of authors who are running book club chapters that aren't necessarily picked for book club selection, but the people they meet at the festival will go, oh, you're a writer, you wrote a book, did you bring some with me? Oh, let me read it, let's look at my book club. Take your books, put them in the car in cases, everywhere you go. I was in Panama City, Florida, I was down there for um, a book festival, um, and Books Alive, and I was at the gas station, and this girl noticed on the side of my van, uh, I have crazy side panels with vintage photos, and she goes, what are you? And I said, I'm the Pulp Wood Queen, and she and she was pumping, and I was pumping, and it's up, she was an attorney there, and she said, I'm in a book club, what's your book? And I gave her a copy of my book. I said, you have to read it, and she goes, oh my gosh, I can't wait to read it. Kathy, oh, all of a sudden, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. Oh, we lost our sound. Uh-oh. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> Hopefully it'll um, 
come back. So anyway, um, I do want to talk about, so I love what Kathy's suggestions was. Uh, try saying something again. No sound. Yeah, no sound. So um, I do want to say something about what her suggestion was about going to these writer conferences, because if you haven't been to those, you know, sometimes some of the barriers might to you might be, oh my gosh, it's out of town, or I got to fly or drive or have a hotel or something along those lines. And it's well worth it. It's well worth it. Invest in yourself and your craft and your writing as a business because I'm sure you figured it out by now. Writing a book is not a if you build it, they will come thing. They can't come if they can't find you, you know. So that's another reason why I want to, um, you know, introduce you to bookkarma.net because what you do on Book Karma is, is an international book marketing platform where authors help other authors market their books, I mean, seriously, around the globe through shared social networks. So basically what you do is you go to bookkarma.net, you put in your ISBN, and we pull all the information about your book, the cover, the title, description, etc. You write the social media messages that go out about your book because social media is the way we market our books now. And it's delivered to a book queue. So if you kind of think of Netflix where you're scrolling through, you know, movies, this is books. And this is an author-only platform. Readers aren't, aren't on here. Authors are. So say you're in St. Louis, Missouri, like me, and I'm in Sydney, Australia, and I see your book in the queue. With one click, I share all your cover information and everything to my followers in Sydney, in Australia, and beyond. So what just happened is that you were able to break through the boundaries of your own social networks to... Um, reach a global audience that you didn't have to cultivate yourself. And so when my viewers and my followers, who follows authors, well, readers do, so when my viewer, my followers see your book in my queue, they think, oh, that looks interesting. They click on it, and they go back to a page on Book Karma that's your book page, and there's a buy this book button that they click on to purchase your book. So what could be easier than that? And we measure all those clickbacks, etc. So it's only $1.99 a month. Book Karma, B O O K A R M A dot net. And if you're not on the platform, we really encourage you to join us. So sign up. There's no reason. There, let me just put it this way there's no downside. Every day we're adding more and more new authors on, which is an entirely new network for you to be. Um, where you can be seen. So I would say to do that. Now, Kathy, let me see if I can hear you again. Try to talk one more time. She is mute. I I have no idea why it's not working. I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, um, let me just t check something up here. If I could, um, it says it, you're unmuted on my end. So I'm sorry. I just, we've just had a glitch here, but, um, You've given us a lot of information, but I want to, I want to, oh, I'm sorry, Book Karma is for all authors of every genre, from fiction, every genre, nonfiction, every genre, children's books, poetry, everything. You, you have to have an ISBN, that's the qualifying thing, um, all genres, though. But I want to mention something else, because I asked you a question about, oh, how do people get seen in other book clubs and stuff, and we were talking about the PubSense Author Conference. And one of the organizers and partners of that is Sherry Stauk. And she has a website that, that's where writers win. And I know that in their uh, services, they have a place where you can find out about how to um, get connected with book clubs. And I would really suggest this. And Bren, if you're still on, I want to make sure I've, I'm going to, I just typed in the web address for where writers win. And I hope that I have the right one in there, but if, if it's, I think it's writerswin.com, um, but if it isn't, it might be where writers win. I just don't have it up in front of me right now. This is an excellent resource for all things for authors. And I love Sherry. She, she is out and about and she connects people and um, obviously she's around it. It goes to these conferences, you know, that we're mentioning too. So I love Kathy's suggestion of get involved um, where um, you can be involved in conferences and meet the people in your area and get talking. It, it is totally 
a karma thing. I mean, authors, we need to help each other. You know, authors are not in competition with each other, ever. It's not like someone's going to buy one book and it's yours or mine. And the more you give out, this is the way life works. It's not just about books. It's life. Whatever you give out is what returns to you. So you can't give enough. And so we encourage our authors to, to share and read and be involved, etc. So um, anyway, um, I'm sorry that we lost your sound, Kathy. That, that's, and your talking is your, is your greatest asset. Because <laughs> I know you could talk forever, but you have given us an excellent an excellent overview of what you do with Pulpwood Queens. Um, I would ask you, it maybe if you can type in the chat box the web address so that when people want to email you or figure out where to send your book, they wouldn't want that information as well. Um, so I'm going to leave you with a final thought. We've talked about author success, and we've talked about book clubs, and we've talked about you know sharing and being social and connecting with other readers, etc. But I do want to talk to you for a minute about you. Um, my work as um, a nonfiction book coach is what I am here to do in the world. And um, it, it's a very serious thing. It's like my life mission is to help change the world one reader at a time. And I started saying this earlier, but we have so many problems in our world that they seem unresolvable. They seem like we can't necessarily even name them anymore. And maybe that's true. What have we learned? We know that top-down approaches don't work. It's not like the government's going to fix any, anything. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a very uh, Christian person, but organized religion doesn't help a lot of things either a lot of times. And Lord knows we've tried to medicate our problems away. And look where we are. Those things don't work the answers are trapped inside of people like you. And when you have a um, story inside of you, you know what you've been through, what you've overcome, what you've learned, and you know how it felt when you were swirling in that by yourself and felt all alone. So when you actually get your story out on paper and out to the world, you can change people's lives. You can do that by writing a book that will change lives, save lives, or transform society. That's how we'll change the world. And you know what? You don't know all that other stuff out there, but you know your space. And you have a responsibility to reach out and tell your story. And, and I can help you do that. There are other book, book coaches who can help you do that as well. But I just want to encourage you to think about the impact that you can have on this world and how we are change agents for life. And so, you know, over here on the, I'm waving, but you can't see on my hands. Over here on the right are, pe are, yeah, are people like you who have an incredible story that can really change people's lives. Over here on this side are people who in some cases are dying, waiting for your solutions. I'm just the hallway that connects you. You know, and we do that by writing a, an amazing nonfiction book um, and getting it out through the world through one, one way, which is book karma. So I really want to encourage you to think about what you can offer and how you can change the world. And we'll write a fabulous book and we'll just send it to Kathy <laughs> to, you know, highlight that. But, you know, we have a responsibility here. And, you know, I just really want to encourage you to know that you're the only one who can do it. You're the only one who has your story. And you're the only one who has your perspective. So that's where we are. I want to thank you for joining us today. I, and Kathy, I think we got all the great stuff in. I really appreciate your time. Love meeting you. Thanks again, Bren, who's on for helping organize and fund and, and invite everybody um, to uh, PubSense Author Summit. And um, we are really here for you authors. We want to help you be successful. So anything you can do. Anything we can do to help you do the, be successful, that's what we're all about. So thanks, and appreciate your time. And uh, we have these webcasts every single week, so they're all about helping authors, so I hope you'll join us again. Take care. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.